Now we have with us the amazing, incredible Kim.com. And we're so glad that he was able to speak to us because I know that, Kim, you have an incredibly, incredibly busy schedule all of the time. So thank you for taking the time to support Julian Assange again because you've been instrumental in putting together the first vigil and continuing to push for public support of Assange. And I, I hope, I don't know if, if your, your mic is still muted. On the bottom left, there will be an unmute button. Um, Zoom mutes panelists for some reason. <laughs> Um, I believe you're still muted, Kim. So basically on the bottom left hand side of the Zoom interface, there should be a mute button and you need to, un there you go. Great. Thank you. All done. Great. First, I'd like to apologize for the delay. Um, I have two computers here and uh, they both refused to boot up. <laughs> so... Wow. Uh, I'm on my phone. Uh, I don't believe this is a coincidence, but uh, here I am. That does not sound coincidental at all. And I'm so glad <laughs> that you prevailed over the technological hurdle there because it's so important to have voices like yours um, speak out on this issue. Thank you. Well, um, so since we last um, appeared on a stream for Julian Assange, a lot of things have happened. And unfortunately, he's obviously silenced and I wanted to just start off with how um, what your thoughts on the developments of the last couple of months um, since our last vigil well the most interesting developing development really only happened a couple of days ago when uh, Lenin Moreno gave an interview uh, to Deutsche Welle to talk about Julian Assange and why he has been silenced and basically what he's saying is that they are silencing Julian Assange because he practices journalism. He is in reporting about political issues. And that why, that's why they are silencing him. And when you think about that for a moment, you realize that uh, this is not only completely unlawful, you know, to say that um, we're not allowing you to communicate with the outside world anymore because you practice journalism. But it's also completely unethical, immoral, and just shows the shift in Ecuador towards the U.S. position and the years of lobbying by the U.S. empire have finally uh, come to fruition with this attack against Julian on no legal basis whatsoever. And that to me is the most uh, astonishing uh, news in the last few days because there's really no legal basis for Ecuador to do this. Absolutely. And not only is there no basis for it, but it actually um, it breaches the Constitution. I don't have the exact article that it breaches in front of me, but I, it, a, a number of commentators have pointed out that it is, it is in breach of the Constitution of Ecuador itself. And uh, as we all know, Julian Assange is a citizen of Ecuador. And so this is in direct um, you know, contradiction to his rights as a citizen of Ecuador. Um, so at this time, in this kind of dire strait that we're seeing Julian Assange in, where he's been in the in the embassy, uh, gagged from communications with his family, friends, and the outside world for, uh, you know, uh, going on, it will. We're going into the third month of that situation. What do you think is the most effective way that people can help that are watching and that are concerned for Julian Assange? You know, I have to say, unfortunately, I'm a little bit disillusioned because there's just not enough happening. You know, we did the first vigil. We, I, I see a lot of tweets about it, but there isn't really the outrage that one would expect in circumstances like this. And it makes me so unhappy. It makes me realize that the vast majority of people are eating the narrative that is given to them by the fake news media, 
and by their politicians. And they are not standing up for the guy that is standing up for our rights, for the whole world, for peace, for justice. You know, and it makes me so angry and really um, almost depressed. I'm never a, a depressed person. I'm a very positive uh, person. But, you know, when you, when you realize that someone who is so well documented in his uh, actions as Julian Assange the injustices are well documented all the facts are out there for everyone to see that there's not an outrage internationally on a massive scale to stop this bullying against him this life-threatening uh, torture against him the the disrespect of uh, the laws and, uh, you know, human rights against Julian Assange, you know, that there isn't this outrage makes me mad. I just can't understand it. I, I think it's unbelievable. And I think almost to an extent, you know, that we are doomed as a human race if we cannot stand up for the most obvious of uh, injustices. If we cannot... Absolutely. You know, if we cannot unite to let the whole world know what's going on and then stand together to prevent it. Unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, there's so much injustice. It's almost impossible to pick a cause and be heard, you know. And then what I often get when I tweet about Julian Assange or I take on a cause like Princess Latifa. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, people always reply and say, well, why don't you care about the children that die in Yemen? Why don't you care about this war or that war or, uh, you know, the justice system in general? And of course, you know, you can go on for two, three hours and pick a cause uh, of injustice because there are so many of them. Absolutely. In and I think uh, uh, the risk that we all have with the Julian Assange case is if they manage to defeat Julian, if they manage to break him and destroy WikiLeaks, we are doomed because uh, the check on democracy is supposed to be the media. And if the media understands that if you report the wrong thing that the government or the deep state establishment does not want you to report about, then we can and will destroy you. Which means we will not hear what WikiLeaks is telling us from other media outlets. And it means we are going to live a life of stupidity. We're going to be living in a world where we are kept away from the truth. And that is something, you know, uh, uh, that really frustrates me a lot, that there are not more people who understand the reality of the Assange case and what it means to them individually. Yes, all these wars are going on. Yes, all these people are getting killed. Um, but in your country where you live, you know, let's say you live in a democracy, what is the value of that democracy to you? What does it mean if you no longer have checks and balances against government agencies that have purely commercial interests that are power hungry, want to extend their you know, deep state secret powers and basically treat politicians like puppets and move them around on the chessboard as they please. What does it mean to you individually if we do not stand up for WikiLeaks and press freedom and the right of us to receive information that we should have in the first place? It should never have been kept from us. 
we elected the people that created these agencies and uh, uh, you know that that should be accountable to us report to us you know it is us the citizen who pick those in power you cannot keep uh, information from us you cannot uh, use your power or abuse your powers um, against the citizenry but that is what's happening around the world you know that Absolutely. is the reality we live in today we are not free citizens we are dumbed down idiots that are consuming a narrative from the mainstream media that is doctored by uh, lobbyists and deep state agencies uh, to sell us wars, sell us conflict, to tell us how good we are to stand up against uh, these nations for, uh, you know, uh, terrorism and all that. But we do, what we do not un understand and what we do not learn is what's really happening in the background, the shifting of massive arms contracts, uh, the, the vast size of the intelligence economy, you know, and their interest and, and what they do to further that and how they lie to us. So if WikiLeaks falls, we are in a very bad situation globally because that will be used as an example to stifle uh, investigative journalism and to stifle truth telling. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm just shocked about the state of silence by so many powerful voices that now have a real opportunity to stand up and do something. There is not enough uh, happening in this case. I completely agree. I think the silence really is ominous. And I think part of, part of what contributes that might be that the people who support Assange, who totally agree with everything you just said, um, may feel as if they have run out of options and ways that they can help. And I think that part of, I hope that part of what people take away from this vigil is that they have to act just as you're saying. And I hope that it increases um, public actions on this. Um, you know, do you have any specific actions you want people to take that can get maybe to get out in the streets to be protesting? I know that there's a, a vigil on the 19th um, for the anniversary of Assange is uh, entering the embassy. But are there any really specific um, uh, actions you want people to take? And sorry, my audio is messing up. I'm gonna uh, check that situation shortly. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, if you have social media, you know, tweet about it. After this vigil is o over, the videos will be <clears throat> available on YouTube. I'm sure there will be some nice edits. I just saw Ross in the previous segment and uh, you know what a brilliant guy everything that he had to say um, was just the essence of uh, truth and uh, you know I invite everyone who may miss, may miss the segment to watch it or you know tell your friends about it especially in Australia it's quite shocking what the Australian government is willing to do um, to support bullying and, and war against Julian Assange, one of their citizens. And I think more Australians also need to stand up for one of their own, you know. So what Ross had to say was some powerful stuff. And I really appreciated uh, that segment. And Ross, if you're watching, thank you very much. Um, I think, you know, use your social media, but also just talk with, you know, friends and family about it. The thing that I always get from people who have no idea about Julian Assange is the press tidbits that they picked up about him being some kind of sexual predator, um, you know, a shady kind of guy. And this is exactly what the U.S. empire and the deep state wanted people to think about Julian because... Uh, you know, they want to discredit his work. They want to discredit his character uh, to make his voice less significant. And they have uh, done uh, an incredible job in uh, uh, getting into the mainstream mindset that Julian Assange is some kind of bad guy when he is absolutely not. All the evidence is out there. You know, if you just spend half an hour and you go, for example, to Justice for, Justice for Assange, uh, you know, you can see the truth and uh, it's, it's all out there. But the general gist 
you know, for people out there is he's some kind of bad guy. And, um, you know, the, the, the hard work that anyone who understands a bit more about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange has to do is really to crack through that first. You know, let people know, uh, actually, he is not a shady guy. He's not a criminal. Uh, these char charges don't even exist. Uh, there was no case. This is all political. And, and really just try, like, in, in five to ten minutes to explain uh, what, is, uh, what the reality is. And then maybe you will get through to people, you know. Maybe then uh, they realize, okay, maybe I should be uh, doing a bit more reading about it or get a bit better understanding about it. But that is really the, 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 the first step to penetrate this fa false mindset of people that Julian is some kind of bad guy, you know. And we have seen it many, many times in history. History, again, repeats itself, you know. Some of the greatest scientists of the world for, for, for many hundreds of years have been labeled as uh, heretics, as crazies, as, uh, you know, uh, unworthy of uh, people's uh, attention and so on, and burned on fires and killed and tortured. And here we are, in our modern age, the internet era, and the same thing is still happening. And it's happening in front of us with more facts than we have ever had. That in is incredible and an amazing point. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's just, it's crazy. We have learned nothing, you know. We, we all these history books are filled with examples of Julian Assange's in the history of the world and how they have been mistreated and abused uh, and, uh, you know, a late acknowledgement arrives that these people were right, they were doing the right thing, they were advancing us as humanity, and Julian uh, fits into that category, you know, he is, he is uh, um, someone who is completely misunderstood by the majority of the people out there. And uh, it happened many times in the past. And all this injustice, everything that is happening to him is only allowed to happen because the minds of the people have been polluted by the filth that the U.S. empire and the deep state has been throwing at him through their media outlets. And let's just call it what it is. The deep state controls the media. You know, they planned, they planned their own people inside the media. They have uh, these uh, uh, silent agents that they can activate uh, to basically take one of their press releases or stories that they write for them to publish that under their name and so we are faced with a with a media landscape where internationally you have one, uh, thousands of journalists that are part of the deep state propaganda operation you know? absolutely and, and uh, that in itself this whole uh, situation is one that, uh, you know, if we understand that to be the truth and the evidence is out there and WikiLeaks has provided that many times over, well, we, that's why we need to support WikiLeaks, you know, because if those people take over and they, they, they have already done in great part uh, what we hear and read in the news well, then we are really just, uh, um, you know, being force-fed all these lies over and over and over again until we believe them, you know? So WikiLeaks is, is uh, in my mind, uh, a very, very important institution that needs to be protected because if we lose it and if we lose Julian Assange, well, then what, what do we have left? Like, think about it. What media out there? You know, we have these small media outlets like yourself, uh, Elizabeth. I, I enjoy reading your work. You know, uh, uh, it's fantastic. It's unbiased. It's fact-oriented. Uh, but, you know, uh, your readership is very small. And you reach a niche audience 
the mainstream media that controls the you know television networks and the large uh, online media they are all in the hands of the deep state and of the uh, establishment and they will tell you uh, anything that furthers their agenda and they will shoot down everything that takes us closer to the truth and you know more and more people are waking up to this reality but not enough it's not the alex uh, the acceleration of knowledge uh, in in the citizenry is not fast enough you know and i, I really think. don't know i really don't know how to accelerate it or what to do about it other than saying to people educate yourself you are ignorant as long as you don't have the knowledge if you are not willing to take your time and learn about these things well then you are ignorant you're going to live in a stupidity bubble and you are not going to advance in any way you know you 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 will be stuck with the narrative that they are feeding you um but if you educate yourself and you go to wikileaks you go to justice for assange you go to you know uh, uh media outlets like like the one that you run elizabeth you know then you might find the truth you might find the wisdom to understand what's really going on with julian assange and only then will you be able you know to make some noise and stand up against this uh, incredible injustice I completely agree, and I think that um, one aspect of what you're saying is absolutely that um, fighting for for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, his human rights, his his um, right to to act as a journalist and simply do his job, um, is not just fighting for him. It's it's fighting for our, ourselves, and it's in our interest to do so. So I think that abs you could couldn't have said it any better as far as as just the recognition that people have to act on this if they want a future that is not completely a you know corporate or establishment establishment narrative um um so basically though i guess i'd like to ask what i know that you're very um you know you, you feel disillusioned uh with the situation as it stands um not to i'm sure i'm not the only one i'm absolutely sure absolutely Everyone watching this right now, anyone who cares about Julian will understand this feeling that I just shared. You know, it is so frustrating. It is so frustrating to see how little is done for Julian. You know, when all the facts are out there. You know, while I have some time, uh, you know, later in the segment, what I would like to do is really make a case for. Julian and against uh, the deep state for what Julian stands for and what he has given us against what the deep state is doing and breaking laws and undermining our human rights. I would like to go into that a little bit so that people understand better why it is absolutely necessary and worthy of our support, you know, to, uh, to, to help Julian. Absolutely. No, please do uh, speak about that. I'd be very, I know that our viewers and myself would be very interested to hear your thoughts on that subject. It's really important. So please, please uh, let us know what your thoughts are on that. Okay. So uh, let's, let's just make the case um, for WikiLeaks for a moment. The case for WikiLeaks is what has WikiLeaks done for society, for humanity, that is, uh, you know, worthy of our attention and worthy of our support. WikiLeaks has told us of numerous war crimes that were committed around the world by the most powerful uh, countries and allies in the world, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and elsewhere around the world. That is really how WikiLeaks started with uh, this uh, video, collateral murder, and so on. And uh, over many, many years, what we have learned is that politicians are for sale, that there's a pay-for-play system in place where lobbyists of large corporations and the military-industrial uh, uh, complex can use their wealth 
to influence uh, political outcomes, to get laws enacted, uh, to get favors. And, um, you know, WikiLeaks has shown us many, many examples of that. The most recent example was, uh, of course, Hillary Clinton with her Clinton Foundation, which was basically a one-stop shop for anyone who wanted to buy political favors. Uh, you know, you donate to this uh, uh, fake um, uh, charity and you get whatever you want from the Clintons. And when a public servant who has never been an entrepreneur, who has never run any business or created any product, all of a sudden is in the, worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars, like in the case of the Clintons. They are extremely rich, a very wealthy family that flies around the world in private jets, holidays on private islands and on super yachts, they, their career, it was the career of a public servant, of someone who was elected into office to represent the people. Well, how did they get so rich? They got so rich because they sold their influence and their power to the highest bidder. And we know that today because of WikiLeaks. And if they do that, you can be sure that there are hundreds if not thousands of other politicians that do that around the world. So WikiLeaks uh, has uh, put a big spotlight on corruption, which is uh, really valuable to us as citizens because uh, this kind of corruption completely undermines any kind of consideration for the people to make decisions and enact laws that help us. These corrupt politicians enact laws and abuse their power to further the interests of those who give them money. And that is the biggest reality in politics today, that it's all for sale, you know? And uh, thanks to WikiLeaks, we have a better understanding of that. And you need to understand that because WikiLeaks puts this information out there, obviously uh, he is the target that he is because they don't want their dis business to be disrupted. They want to keep making millions of dollars uh, through corruption, and WikiLeaks is in the way of that. WikiLeaks has also educated us about the deep state and how uh, the intelligence community has really become the master of uh, the political process. They completely influence and dominate politicians and their decision-making process. They provide them with uh, information that furthers their own agendas, which is the intelligence community wants to be more powerful. It's uh, called the deep state for a reason because they want to run things. You know, they want to run things outside of the Constitution, outside of oversight and regulation, and just do what they think uh, is best for the country. And often what they think is best for the country is also in par with what's best for uh, the corporations, the war machine, the private contract. I believe we have just... Um, there you go. The connection dropped for one second, but you're Sorry. back. No problem. Yeah, I, I, okay, I'm back. So uh, what I was saying is they are operating uh, to increase their own power in the shadows, uh, to use their influence over uh, politicians uh, uh, with two ways. Number one, um, you know, they provide intel that is hard to question because they say, well, we have all these tools, we have all this information, and what we give to you is the truth. When we know many times over, they have lied to politicians, they are social engineering politicians and leaders to achieve the outcome that they want. And then on top of that, we know that they manipulate intelligence. They manipulate evidence to... Uh, uh, you know, get a politician or a leader to do 
what they want uh, them to do. And all of it, again, is based on a mix of commercial interests, you know, where the, where the biggest corporations in the war industry and in the war machinery uh, want another action being taken somewhere around the world. When the warehouses are full and the, the bombs are all uh, bought and the order books are empty, you know, that's when the, when the war machine wants their deep state lobbyists to start another war because exactly. they, need to make, they need to make money and the, the weapons deliveries need to continue. And if they don't, then that entire industry uh, will crumble. And uh, so the reality that this is going on is completely reflected in all of these releases by WikiLeaks, where you see the emails of, of security contractors. You, you see the communications uh, you know, that, that lead to war, that create the, the narratives uh, that make us want to go to war. You know, when every single time uh, the outcome is, uh, is disastrous and millions of people die and the mainstream media cheers about, uh, you know, what's happening and how the U.S. is, is spreading their um, democracy around the world. And in reality, uh, every single time, it's a, it's a massive crisis with, uh, you know, children and innocent citizens dying all around the world. Simply, and this is the key point, simply to make money from their misery. Because that is what this is really all about. There are a couple of interesting uh, websites. One of them is um, a site that has counted the number of civilian death around the world since World War II uh, uh, caused by U.S. foreign policy and wars. And over 30 million people have died as a result of that uh, warfare for profit that is around incredible. the world. That's an incredible number. Yeah. And it's all, you know, backed up with, uh, with evidence. And, uh, you know, of course, it's, 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 it's a time frame of over many, many decades. But when you realize that this killing is going on solely for the purpose of making money and increasing their power and their global foothold, well, if we didn't have WikiLeaks, you know, and if we didn't have investigative journalism that points us to uh, the facts behind it <clears throat> or releases the documents that show this, well, uh, you know, this will keep happening. And the biggest threat really to this machinery of war and war for profit, the biggest threat really is the internet, you know, and is uh, the technologies that allow us to access information so efficiently, search through large databases and, you know, identify all of these things uh, that are going on. And WikiLeaks really has provided us with so much insight. But let's go on. What else has WikiLeaks told us? You know, all major nations have signed up to the Human Rights Charter, Magna Carta, you know, all the, the outstanding legal frameworks that give us our human rights. One of those human rights is our right to privacy. You know, it's enshrined in, in the Human Rights Charter, yet the deep state um, is surveilling us at every opportunity from your location data to your emails, to your communications, uh, you know, anything you do, even your webcam, uh, your smart devices, your handsets, you know, everything today is backdoored and everything is unsafe for you to use. And if you ever become a person of interest, your entire communication history, all your movements, wh wherever you've gone 
in the world, uh, you know, is, is stored in your phone through your location data. And these deep state agencies have access to that. Even if you disable location services on your phone, they're still running and submitting all your movements. So there's basically a map of every single person that has a smartphone in the world, you know, where they have been over the last five years. They can re reconstruct every single movement that you've made, every communication that you've made. And if we didn't have WikiLeaks or people like, you know, leakers like Edward Snowden, we would not know about these things. And this is why the deep state hates WikiLeaks and hates Julian Assange, because we are interfering in their illegal gathering of our private information, which is happening in total breach of uh, the human rights uh, that we have and uh, are enshrined in uh, the UN uh, Human Rights Charter. And they are in total breach of international law as well, which prohibits this kind of activity. And uh, yet here we are, the person who shows us all of this and explains it all to us is the person that is being persecuted. It's not the perpetrators. We're not going after the James Clappers or the you know, leaders in these intelligence agencies that uh, gather your data en masse completely illegally. We're going after the guy who told us about it, you know? And the same with Edward Snowden. We are going after the guy who's done the right thing and said, I can't be a part of this. You know, I know what's going on here. I can't uh, do this anymore and uh, releases information to the public. These people are vilified. Uh, they are hunted. Uh, and ultimately, they are being thrown into jail or killed Yet they provide the greatest service to humanity in recent history by warning us about it, by telling us about it. So it's perverse that there are not more people standing up for Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, and you know everyone who is a truth teller. And that truth telling is now a crime. And that they can pursue someone like Julian and the way they do without much repercussion, that is really the biggest problem in society today, that we allow this point. to happen. That's a, a we allow this point. to happen, you know? Yeah. And that, that means it puts us on a path where we will not be able to escape this new reality that every person has zero privacy, that their entire communication and movement uh, information is available to governments around the world, and they use this uh, for uh, really control. You know, they, con they, they will use it ultimately to control their population. And at one point in time in the future, it is a, a, a given, based on the history of the world, we will have a leader again who is evil and who will use this power against us. And then we will have absolutely no way to defend ourselves. You will not be able to hide uh, you know, who you are communicating with what you were thinking, and that goes all the way into the past since these systems have been established. So we are basically toast. You know, if we ever run into a situation where a leader wants to abuse it, uh, uh, you know, we are all fucked. And it's already being abused, let's say, in a soft way. Obama used the spying powers to spy against the Trump campaign, you know. And then when they found something that they thought uh, would be helpful to to destroy uh, the Trump administration. They unmasked communications that were supposed to be uh, totally private and then leaked that stuff to their friends, to their paid friends uh, in the media, the so-called journalists. And, you know, uh, if Obama can do this 
and Trump is using these systems as well now. Well, what if you know we we will be in in a in a place in the future where a leader says, you know, I want world domination. I don't want any dissent. I don't want any opposition. We need to crush down on this part of the population and make sure that we remain in power forever. And believe you me, that is going to happen again. It has happened in history hundreds of times. Don't think that because we are in a period of relative peace that uh, you know, that's not going to happen again. So by providing these types of powers and tools to a deep state that doesn't even answer to us, doesn't even answer to normal courts. Everything they do happens in co total secrecy. They have some hand-picked judges that they like that uh, give them the powers to do what they do. It's a complete joke. It's a complete undermining of our democracy and our rights. And WikiLeaks is the biggest threat uh, to uh, what they are doing to their uh, uh, criminal activity. And that's why they're trying to get rid of Julian and silence him. And uh, the fact that there's not more outrage about it is extremely frustrating to me because I can see what's going on and I can see how this is going to get worse and worse for all of us. And speaking of, of the, the silencing of Assange, um, I'm, I'm hearing feedback from Susie that the uh, Unity4j Twitter account is actually being uh, shadow banned and that there's a censorship of the hashtag Unity4j, uh, the tag on Twitter. So uh, I would ask everyone, you know, Kim, everyone watching to please go tweet as much as you possibly can to break that censorship because if people don't hear this message from people like Kim and our amazing panelists then there is just uh, no hope left as Kim is saying so um, please do well, not let that censorship it, it's another censorship. important point to make for WikiLeaks um, all these tech companies Google Facebook Twitter um, uh, Microsoft you name it every major tech company uh, that is in the U.S. that is collecting massive amounts of data about their users is in bed with the deep state. You know, the executives of those com companies get all the benefit of the, the powers that the deep state holds. You know, uh, the powers include... Um, you know, not being scrutinized as much by the government, getting tax benefits, which is real dollars into their pockets for selling out their users. And that's, hap that's what's happening in reality. And, you know, these tech company CEOs are openly politically biased. They pick their candidates uh, and uh, they then use their platforms to try and get them elected. And something like the Trump surprise victory surely is never going to happen again in the future because everyone has underestimated the power of the people and their minds. And, you know, they will adjust their manipulation. They will make it uh, smarter and do it in a way that is not as obvious as it is today because they are learning from their mistakes, you know? And the problem is that they are really embedded with the deep states. They have backdoors in their softwares that allow uh, uh, the intelligence community to know everything about you. Um, and they are doing it willingly and happily. And you've seen just uh, today, um, you know, Google uh, executives have told their workers that, uh, you know, they are no longer working on this Pentagon contract where they help with AI and they help with, uh, you know, more advanced systems for, for drones and for the Pentagon. And, uh, you know, the, the fact that that is even going on, that a company like Google that started with the slogan, don't be evil, you know, is now working as a contractor for the military-industrial complex to make drone attacks more efficient and provide search algorithms to spy agencies so that they can find out better 
who you're friends with and your movements and create beautiful maps and beautiful data uh, 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 collections about everything uh, that you are and who you are. That is what Google does today. You know, they are uh, uh, colluding with the deep state to provide better tools to make it easier to spy on you, you know? And we live in this environment where, uh, you know, Twitter is, is shadow banning people. They're not even telling anyone about it. And they're doing it to um, interfere with opinions. They're doing it to make sure that not more people understand what's happening to Julian Assange and that the number of people that support him don't reach don't reach critical mass. They are doing it very effectively in a shadowy way. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the platforms we are all working on. You know, we are all using these technologies to try and make a difference and to try and rally people. Yet at the same time, the message doesn't get across because silently in the shadow realm, they are blocking these communications. They are stopping it from trending. And, you know, in Twitter's case, it's really check uh, the CEO's love for Hillary Clinton and how bitter he was when his favorite candidate lost, you know, and you see that, um, Twitter is quite aggressive in shadow banning conservative voices, you know, especially the people that are uh, supporting Trump. And uh, when tech companies abuse their power in this way, um, you know, even more important that we have institutions like WikiLeaks that tell us about it, where Twitter uh, uh, programmers can take this algorithm and leak it to WikiLeaks because I'm sure there are many people within Twitter, just like the 4,000 Google employees that wrote uh, uh, and signed an internal letter to Google executives saying, we don't want to be involved in the war machine. We don't want to have contracts with the Pentagon. Just like that within Twitter, you will have people that say, you know, the shadow banning and this. Uh, manipulation of opinion is not something that I want and therefore I leak the source code or I leak the algorithm or the whole um, uh, uh, technique behind this shadow banning to WikiLeaks. And that's why we need something like WikiLeaks. It's really the last place, the last bastion where you can go if you are involved in an organization that is systematically uh, lying to you, that is breaking the law, that is manipulating you, you know, there will be individuals that are not happy with that, that are going to provide a leak. They are going to, at great risk to themselves, release information. And where else do you go if WikiLeaks isn't around? You know, you can't go to the New York Times, you can't go to The Guardian, you can't go to any of these press outlets today because they are all corrupt. They themselves would rather take your leak and give it to the deep state sources and say, well, how are we going to deal with this? What narrative can we create uh, to combat this? You know, they are all in bed. And uh, that is why it's so important that uh, you fight for WikiLeaks. Absolutely. And in the last few minutes of this segment, um, if you have any thoughts that you'd like to just close with, I mean, that was an amazing, clo uh, you know, concept in itself to broach with people. But if you have, have any final thoughts, please, you know, share them with the viewers. Well, I made the case for WikiLeaks. Uh, in, in my last words, I like to make the case against those that are abusing their power. And you raised it earlier, Elizabeth, and it's a very important point. People always say, why doesn't he step out of the embassy and face justice? And the most regrettable fact that I have learned over the last uh, seven years myself 
through my case, but also by following the case of Julian and many others that are being attacked by the deep state, the reality is the justice system itself is rigged. You are not going to get justice because they are shopping for judges that are going to give them the results that they want. They are going to promote judges or remove judges from your case. They are going to use their power um, you know, to make sure that you don't have a level playing field. They will use terms like national security to make sure that no one gets to see your evidence. You know, they are going to use all kinds of methods to make sure that this hearing against you is private and that the citizenry will never even understand what is going on in your case. You know, and um, when you look at the judgments that were issued against WikiLeaks in Sweden or most recently in the United Kingdom, they are not about upholding the law. You know, they are all political. And when you look at the judgments and you look how, um, uh, you know, the justice was done, it really becomes quite apparent that there is no justice. So for Julian to take a gamble and to say, I'm going to leave the embassy and I'm going to allow the UK to have this extradition battle, which is going to take five or six or seven years uh, through all the instances with almost a certain outcome because of the political nature of his case of extradition and then being extradited um, to the United States, to the Eastern District of Virginia uh, and be in a courtroom in Alexandria where basically the entire populace of that region uh, is, is, is somehow involved or uh, associated with people in the intelligence community. You're basically being asked to trust a jury if you even get to a jury trial because of the secretive nature of your proceeding, but let's say you get a jury, then they will make sure that the people on the jury will be, uh, you know, members of the intelligence community. And so they are completely manipulating the judicial process. It's a complete abuse of process. And they're doing it so openly now, so, so ridiculously openly, and there's not really any outcry uh, about it that Julian Assange, if he were to leave the embassy, is guaranteed to be extradited and guaranteed to be found guilty in the United States of some created bogus crime that doesn't even apply to him. And that is why, you know, everyone needs to understand that is why he is not leaving the embassy. He is fighting the fight that he fights because not only is the media manipulated and politicians are manipulated, but our judiciary as well. And that. And I seem to have lost audio with Kim. Um, can anyone else hear? You know, Kim okay. The audio is back now. Sorry? Yeah, the audio cut out, at least on my end, for a, a couple of seconds there. Uh, I just wanted okay. to check. It's fine now. So the, the, the final word that I have really is that the judicial system cannot be trusted to protect the rights of Julian Assange. It is us, the people, who have to stand up for him, and our voices need to be heard. Uh, and we need to be more uh, noisy and more aggressive in making sure that those in power understand that we will not allow them to abuse their power to punish Julian Assange for what is essentially nothing more than truth-telling. That is what he uh, is persecuted for, for telling us the truth incredible thoughts to conclude that segment thank you kim so so much for joining us today as as we as you joined us and as you instigated the first vigil uh the reconnect julian vigil that went for uh, i believe over 10 hours thank you so much for joining us 
And I hope that people really take to heart everything that you've said. It's really, really perceptive and important uh, concepts that I hope um, that that I hope the viewers react to and really do go out and become much more vocal for Julian Assange. I hope so too. All the best.